I am not expecting anything from you. Just a message has been given to me. A message has been given to me. And it's my duty, or I have been sent for this message to reach every ears. So let me take it that now I have the building. So I'm praying you have mercy upon me and let me fulfill what your father and my father have sent me. What is the mystery the Lord said I should reveal to me and you? This message is purposely for evangelists. Anyone who has called himself, or who has ordained himself, or who has come into the very yard of God to work, this message is for you. So I'm part of them. I'm part of them. If you can share, the Lord will bless you. If you call yourself evangelist, if you call yourself evangelist, or if you call yourself a preacher, or if you call yourself a Christian or a fellowship, a follower of Christ, you have been employed. Hallelujah. You have been employed. You have been employed. And the employed you have been employed is you have a guidelines. The one who has employed you has given you a guidelines and you have to work on that guidelines. To do the work or else you'll be fired so many of us many of preachers have been fired many of uh, followers of christ has has been disowned but they don't know as i'm about to deliver this message may the lord give you spiritual understanding in the mighty name of jesus may the lord give you understanding in the mighty name of jesus so that you accept what is coming but not what I'm speaking, but what the Lord will speak through me to you. We will start from the book of Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. The verse number 1 up to, 1 up to the infinity of Acts chapter 13. But, I will not going to use only today for this mystery. I think it will take a period of time. I think it will take a period of time. The mystery the Lord said I should reveal to you. Can you quickly go with me to the book of uh, Acts chapter 13? The secretary has not come. So if you can write for me, heaven will appreciate you. The secretary of End Town Voice family has not come. That is Sarah. So, if you can write the Bible verse for me, heaven would appreciate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Okay, we are there. Acts chapter 13, the verse number 1 up to 10. We will learn... Or you review this mystery that the Lord has given to me from the 1 up to 10. So tomorrow, if God willing, we will continue. So you will start from the Acts chapter 13, the verse 1. I will not reach, I will not read much because I'm alone. No one is reading for me. So you can call on audio or you can call the number that you have stored. So that you can read the Bible for me. If not, I will review the mystery that the Lord has given to me. And we will continue on the program. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 13, you are all welcome. You are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, can you write for me? Acts chapter 13, the verse number 1 to 10. 1 to 10. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10 says, The verse number 1, the mystery, the Lord said, I should reveal, God richly bless you. May the heaven open and shower the blessing, what I'm receiving to you also. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. The verse 1 talks about the church. 
the verse one talks about the church when the bible says church i'm not talking about the now we are we are we are, we are today message i think is very spiritual so you have to be in spirit and listen to the what the spirit want to tell the church when the bible says church i'm not talking about pentecost the bible is not talking about uh Anglican. the bible is not talking about uh christ apostolic the bible is talking about you and me that is called the church so this church i mean the body of christ will stand at the judgment seat of god because the book of revelation says he did not see any temple in the church in the in the city so i'm talking about the church over here so the book uh, mark chapter you, you can take your bible and follow the footsteps at chapter 13 verse 1 to 10 the verse 1 the mystery that i'm revealing by the grace of god to you this message is for the evangelists this message is for the preachers this message is for the prophet this message is for the prophetess please come and listen to the voice of god this voice is calling this voice is preparing the way of the second coming of christ as the lord prepared the second the first coming of christ that this voice and time voice is preparing the way the path the right path for the second coming of christ if you are under this voice you are not missed you are hearing the voice that is preparing the way of christ jesus if it will be my will i will not reveal this mystery if it will be my will i will go and sleep if it will be my way i will not use my bundle or my data or my my wi-fi to and my energy but i have been instructed to reveal this mystery to you because i am a servant of god so the evangelist open here sarah you are welcome and the evangelist open your ears and listen to the voice of god this is what the lord said i should tell you including me reveal the mystery to you he has been employed you in his vineyard and you are forsaken his rules and regulations in vineyard and now you are using your body your flesh your mind your thought your strength to do the work what you can't do so that we are we are all under anger of god if they listen, that say yes, the Lord, I will have mercy upon them. If they don't listen, He will teach us that He is the Lord our God. That say yes, the Lord. That say yes, the Lord. So as I'm about to speak, let every evil spirit bow down. As I'm about to speak, let the devil be bow, be destroyed, be shut up, and let this message read the world. Share this message to read the word. I'm not speaking from my own. I don't know what I I, I, I have not been forced to speak this word. I have not I, I, I'm not forcing myself to speak this word. I'm be tormented by this message. I'll be tormented by this message. And if I don't deliver it, I have a punishment. Why have you forsaken the law? Why have you forsaken the, 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 the rules? Why have you forsaken the strength? Why have you forsaken the knowledge? Why have you forsaken the, the wisdom that you, the Lord has been given to you to do his work? You think you are preaching for your own. You think you are preaching for money. You think the Lord called you to his vineyard to pray. If you don't have that authority, you don't that don't have that hey if you don't have that strength the lord will never call you if you can't do it the lord will never call you if you can't preach the lord will never call you if you are lazy he will never call you he knew you can do it and do it better why have you in this own what have you for 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 for, for taking the rules that is gathering you if you go to the military they have their rules if you go to the military they have their rules if you go to every place, they have rules and regulation. Any city, they have rules and regulation. Any world, they have rules and regulation. And if you, if you, if you, if you, if you disobey one, you have some question to answer. Why have you, why have you been disobedient to the word of God? Let me go to the mystery. Those who have joined late. The mystery he has given to me to minister or to reveal to you and me is Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. I think it's, it's the whole book of Acts. But this is what he said I should start first. God willing, tomorrow or the days ahead of us, if he has not come, we will continue to review so that the, those who have ears will be resting. I will not get a chance to read. 
or I will not get enough time to read. So if you can call the number that the end time number that you have stopped so that you can read the Bible for me. At chapter 10, verse at chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. I will only review the mystery and leave the reading. If possible, I will read. At chapter 10, at chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. The mystery is for the Lord said I should review in the verse 1 says the one the verse 1 talks about the church the verse 1 talk about the church and when I say the church I'm not talking about those churches the, what you know the Pentecost the da, 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 the holiness that da, da. no I'm talking to you the body your body that's what I mean get it please be in the spirit because you are in the spirit right now so the church and the, the 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 meaning of the the mystery in the verse one says it's, it's talking about the church and the calling of the church. So this one is the calling of you. You will say, hey, and then uh, sister, end time. Uh, then I'm not evangelist, so I'm I'm not part of this mystery. I'm not part of this warning from God. Yes, you, the day you accepted Christ as the Lord as, as your personal savior, you have become evangelist. You have become prophet. You have become prophetess. You have become prophet. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus, for connecting. Mr. God promised. You have become a prophetess. You are, you are part of that. That's why he revealed to me that the verse 1 talks about the church. And not Pentecost, not Anglican, not blah, 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 blah. It's you. So you are part of them. Don't, don't run away. Don't run away. You are part of them. You are evangelist. I'm speaking to you. Yes, you. you are, yes, you. Yeah, yes, you. He said he's talking about the church. And the day you are called. And the day you are called. So the first day you started preaching, you are called. The heaven bodies has, uh, has noted that day as a, as a laborer in the vineyard. And as if you are not preaching, the day you accepted the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. That day, the Lord called you and the heaven bodies wrote your name that you are part in the vineyard. And the, uh, we are finished for the verse 1. Let's read the verse 1. If God per, uh, term, for time's sake. In the church. In the church. At chapter three, uh, 13 verse 1. In the church at Antioch. There were prophets and teachers. Uh, Barnabas. Simon. Called Neja. Louis or Lucros. I don't know the, mean, uh, the mention. You know my English. Of Kralion. Mana, who had been brought up with Herod and the and the Tatios and Saul. So you see the mystery is revealing itself here. It's the church. It's the church. So the names I've mentioned that you you have you you are well educated, so you can you can read it very well and get understanding, or you mention the name well. So replace the name that it's mentioning in your name. So the day you God promised, the Lord called you in the church of Antioch. So in the church of where you are, the day you cannot, uh, he called you Kenneth. He called you God promised. He called you Sarah. He called you Doki. That is the day. And he has given you something. Anybody, when I call you right now, when I take a phone and call you, I have the reason why I'm calling you. So why is it that the Lord is calling you? Why is it that you are in the world prostituting, uh, doing unnecessary things, and you came to Jesus, received the call of Jesus, and you take him as your Lord and personal thing? Let's see the meaning of this calling in the verse 2. In the verse 2, the mystery over there that he has revealed to me to tell you is the work which you have been called. That is the verse 2. The word that has been called, the meaning of the Lord calling you. So let's read and call, uh, confirm this mystery. So the verse 2 says, where is the verse 2? The verse 2 says, how I wish someone would read for me. The verse 2 says, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, set apart of me Barnabas and Saul. Anytime I mention the name there, don't don't take it that Paul. They have gone. It's now you put your name there when you're reading. Put your name there. Okay, that is what the Lord says. Um, set apart the uh, set apart for Barnabas, and you call your name. So for the work of which I have called them. 
So the first day he called you, the Lord has set apart for the work that he has been called you. For the work that he has been called you. So the verse 2, the mystery is the work which you have been called. So the evangelists and the prophets and the uh, followers of Christ over here, if you don't know the word the Lord has called you, he says, I should tell you today that he has called you, he has called you in his vineyard. He has called you in his vineyard. He has called you in his vineyard to do the work of God. So in this vineyard, when you come, when you come to the vineyard or you are invited to the house of God, the food you eat is fasting. The food you eat is fasting. The, the snacks or the drink you will drink is worshipping. It's worshipping, fasting, and prayer. This is the food they will use to welcome you. That is the verse 2. That is the verse 2. And the verse 3, the Lord revealed this mystery to me in the verse 3 says, yeah, that is, I think the verse 3 has entered the verse 2. Fasting and prayers. Fasting and prayers. So the verse 3 is talking about the food they will give to you or they welcome you. When you go to somebody's house, he welcome you. Or if you come to the vineyard of God, he welcome you. What will build you? What they will give you? You see, when you go, you go as a visitor, uh, they will give you water to drink. They will do you this to, for you to get energy. Or if you are hungry from where you are coming from. If you are hung, hung, hungry from where you come from, you eat and drink. So they welcome you with fasting and prayers and worshiping. This is the food we eat in the Lord's heart, aside from the, 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 the words of God. So that is the verse 3. Then, after you have finished eating or eat the word of God, or, or uh, manif uh, yielding your soul with this fasting and prayers, let me preach something here. By the time the day the Lord called you as the first day, the first day you accepted the Lord and your personal within that man, see how you worship God. You can pray, you can fast, you can you can you can give, you do all such of everything in the house of God. But when the your love that for God grow cold, now you can't fast again. You see, now you can't fast again, you can't pray again, you can't worship the Lord again. It means the food that has they gave to you as a visitor in the vineyard of God, you have forsaken it. So now you have you 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 have you have grown cold you have grown cold that's why in the book of a revelation he said go for your first love go for your first love so you have to go for your first love this mystery only those who have the wisdom of god and those who are willing to understand it will understand it what is the meaning of mystery what is the meaning of mystery mystery is something which is hard to understand it which is very difficult for you to understand it so if you are defending mystery in christianity mystery is the understanding only the the help of uh, the holy spirit who allow you to understand mysteries so if you are not in the spirit pray for the lord to let you to know or to understand what i'm telling you in the mighty name of jesus so you are in the verse four you are in the verse four the verse 4 said, sent by the Holy Spirit. That is the mystery over there. He's talking about how after you are finished eating, they, they will send you to the, to, to the world. They will send you and the sender. And the sender. Oh, my AC. And the sender is the Holy Spirit. The sender is the Holy Spirit. He said, uh, send by the Holy Spirit. Can you people meet this? You will be sent by the Holy Spirit. So after you, are, that you have been called, if you are for God, let me tell you, you will be sent by the Holy Spirit. You will be sent by the Holy Spirit. Let's read to confirm this mystery of by sending by the holy spirit in the verse 4 the verse 4 says the verse 4 says the two of them sent on their way by the holy spirit went down to silicious and sent from there to the 
Caprios, you know the names are very huge. It takes a graduate to mention it. So follow it in the mighty name of Jesus. So you are not called by your own again. You you are not of your own again. You are under um, they have employed you. So after, you will be sent by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You will be sent by the Holy Spirit. You will be sent by the Holy Spirit. That is there. So we are going to the verse 5. It's the whole book of art. Let me tell you, if you want to understand the calling, how to minister, how to do the work of God without uh, in the case or without the law being angry with you you have to read the whole book of art and adopt the the character or the attitude the strategies of the apostle because they were the first evangelists you have to adopt such teachings or else you will you will wrong God or else you will wrong God. So now you are in the verse 4. The verse 4 say they will be sent by the Holy Spirit. Now we are going to the verse 5. When they, uh, let me read the mystery first. The message, the message, it talks about the message which is the word of God. It talks about the message with the word of God. You see the verse 4 say sent by the Holy Spirit. And what what message have be have you been sent to preach over there? Is the the message I'm come to preach for you. Many of us you have diverted the message the Lord has given to us. Many of us you have forsaken the message the Lord has given to us. So let me tell you that the Lord told me to preach the word to preach his word now i have diverted to prophetess now i have diverted to evangelists i have diverted many of us has 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 switched our calling and doing what favored us why don't you share do you feel shy to share the word of god hmm. so you are in the verse five the whole the verse 4 is sent by the holy spirit it talks about how the you will be sent by the holy spirit and what message the message of the word what is the word you are all you are always be saying in the word of god the word of god the word of god the word of god what is the word of god what is the word of god the word of god the word of god what is the word of god the word of god is the things said by god any word that has been spoken through God is the word of God. So many are preaching, but they are not preaching the word that has been said by God. Many are preaching from their own thought. Many are preaching from the school they went. Many of them are teaching with their, with their, with their physiology, with their knowledge, with their, the, the knowledge that they have been acquired from them. Bible school from what their own understanding. But if you don't know the word of God, the, the Lord said, I should reveal to you that the word of God is the word that have been spoken by the word, by God. Let me bring down letter by letter so that the baby Christian will understand it. And let me tell you when this, if you are preaching, you have to, it's the, the word of God is solid and liquid food solid and liquid food so somewhere some preaching are for mature people in christ and some preaching is for baby christian but now because you have lack of this mystery of evangelism we give solid food to baby christian and we give milk and other things you have missed and you are killing the soul of christ which is not of god so let me break it down the word of god in other words the word of God is a name spe specifically as a name for Jesus Christ. So you can just say Jesus Christ is the word of God. Hallelujah. So the meaning of the word of God is any word that has been said by God. Or is the word of Christ Jesus. It's a name Jesus. Where can you find this? John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 says, In the beginning was the word and the, the word was with God and the, the, the word is God. He was in the beginning. So anything that says the Lord is Jesus Christ. So any preacher, or if you are listening to pre uh, pre uh, preaching or teachings, it means I'm putting Christ in you. This is mystery. Unless you get the Holy Spirit to uh, get, give you understanding. I'm giving Christ to you. 
for many of us many of us have divert this word of god now we don't know the meaning of the word what is the word it's christ jesus so if you are giving christ to them that's why because you have divert or you have forsaken this fruit that's why we give solid food to baby christian we give solid food to baby Christian. But the word that should be preached to the to the people is to give the person Jesus. So Maranatia or any fastest praise, you can't give uh, anything to the person. You can give Jesus to the Maran. Or you can give this word, or, I mean the Jesus, to the fastest praise. And when the word stay in the person, I mean the Jesus stay in the person, when the Holy Spirit come to the person, he will teach him or her what to do with a touch of what you be, he will be sitting and you'll be teaching. Because he said, go into the world and preach the word to the whole nation, Jerusalem, Judea, and every country. If the person accept, baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and the, of the Holy Spirit and teach them what to do and what they shouldn't do. That says the Lord in the book of Mark chapter 28 verse 19 to 20. You should teach them. It was instruction. It was instruction. So the word of God is also a name. And that name is not me, Agatha. That name is not, it's the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I can see the baby Agoni. Those who don't understand Agoni. But I pray to the Lord to give you understanding of these things. It should give you understanding of these things. So if you are going to preach the word as it was instructed, as it was instructed in the book of Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter 16, you should follow the guideline. The moment you miss the guideline, it means the Lord will be angry to you. Let me put, bring it to the lower point. If I'm your mother and I send you to, I send you to go and buy me this, to buy me this Bible, to go and buy me this Bible, I give you money, uh, Kofi or Adwa or Kenneth or God Promise or Sarah. Take this, uh, go to the supermarket over there and buy me this Bible. And if my daughter or my son go to the supermarket and come back with this remote, I will be angry. I will say, this is not what I told you. This is what I say, yeah, that this is what my, 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 my evangelist, my so-called evangelist, my so-called liberal, that's what I've been employed in my vineyard has diverted. I told them to buy this, by the boss that. I told them to do this, by the day that. The Lord sent the disciples and he gave them instruction. They did not forsake the instruction. They followed the instruction. And their evangelism or their gospel spread among abundantly. The moment you forsake the instruction, my brother, the Lord will be angry with you. The Lord said he is angry with us, me and you, as a preacher. As a preacher, he is angry with you. And he said, I should reveal this mystery to you. If they accept it, I will have mercy upon them. If they don't, I will, t I will show them I am the Lord their God. I am the Lord your God. Now, some people, some, someone has been called to be a, a giver. Someone has been called to give, to be a, a giver. But the person is now, has be, have, have become a beggar. Someone has been called to preach the word. Now he has sent himself to prophet. Someone, to, uh, someone has been called to be professor or prophet or prophet. The person has sent himself to teachers. Someone has been called to be a singer for the gospel to go or to be nice or to be to be to be have an appetite. The singer has turned himself to a preacher. Someone has been called as a John the Baptist to prepare the second way of Christ, the second way of the second coming of Christ. The person has changed and they have replaced the word of God with another thing. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. May the mercy of God find us. Now you are in the verse 5. The verse 5 is the, he's talking, the, the Lord said he's talking about the word of God, which is Christ. So if you have been sent as evangelists, if you have been called, you have to give the word to the needy, those who are hungry. Now you are going to the verse 6. The verse 6, the verse 6, the word has been given to you. The word of God has been given to you. And it has people that you should give the word of God to them. Yes, it's half people who you have to give the word to them. Let's see the mystery over there. 
he said whom the world should be preached to and where to preach the mystery the Lord has should reveal in the verses to you is whom the world should preach to or where the world should preach to let's confirm it with the, the Bible reading the verse says the verse says they traveled through the whole Islam until they came to perfume there they, they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet and by Jesus. So the word has been given to you. You have to preach it to the whole world. Let's see the mystery the Lord said I should reveal over here. He said the word, the, 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 the meaning or the mystery in the verse says, whom the world should preach and where to preach. So the world should preach to the whole world. To the whole world. Whom? Who are those people? Now you have seen the place the world should be preached. It confirmed. It confirmed the book of Matthew chapter Matthew chapter twenty eight. He said, "Go ye to the to, and go and make my disciples to the whole world." Hallelujah. My disciple to the whole world. Now the mystery given here. He said, "Whom? Who? Who should the world should preach?" So in the world you are going. The nation he said you should go and make my disciples. Not all of them to get this word. Let's know. Let's see whom the world should be preached to. Let's see whom the world should be preached to. In the verse, say, there, you are still reviewing that mystery over there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He says, he says, the verse, the verse, five says, when they arrive to this, uh, or, um, the verse, says, sorry, the verse says, they travel through the whole Islam. So, Take the Islam over there and, and, and replace it. They travel through the whole world. So this is the uh, where you should preach. And whom should preach? Who should preach? When they arrive in Samaria, they proclaim the word of God into the Jewish. Into the Jewish. Into the Jewish. So what is who is Jewish? We have the Israelites. We have the Jewish. And they preached the words to the Jewish. They preached to the synagogue. John was with them as their helper. John was with them as their helper. I'm not reading the verses. I think this is the verse 5. They traveled through the whole Islam. Oh, sorry. They traveled through the whole Islam until they came to Perfu. Uh, there they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar Jesus. <laughs> named Bar Jesus. So these people are the people you should preach the word to. He said they met, they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet. So when this why the false prophet. It, it, it said the first prophet whose name is by Jesus. So now, as the Lord is telling me to tell you, you have to preach the word. You have to preach the word. You have to preach the word to the one who is carrying an evil God. The one who don't know God. The one who don't accept the Lord as Messiah. Please, can you read the Bible for me? If you can read the Bible, you can open your Bible when I'm if you come to if you can't no problem if if the world should preach to the jewels the samarians the islam the whole world if you can read brother who have joined please take your bible when i mention the bible verse you will read for me if you can't no problem okay let me you it. should preach the world they, they preach the he said they proclaim they proclaim the word of god to the jewels but now what is why is it that the lord is angry over here now me, as, as, how do you say it Hell, holy spirit give me explanation please give me explanation now my my ministry my ministry is end town voice my ministry is end town voice so those those people who are part of the end town voice is the people i preach the world to is the people I preach the word to. If any fasting and prayer is the only people that are praying for them, 
if the Lord has given me a message to the whole world, it's only them that are priests to. Mercy, Lord. If the Lord, if the Lord has given me a, a gift of prophecy, it benefits only my ministry. If the Lord has given me something important to his children, it benefits. But he said this word that he has been given to you to preach to the whole world. He a prophet called by Jesus, the Jewish. Jewish. Oh. So this what one, the, pardon? What portion of the Bible? Please, we are... Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. Acts chapter right. 13, verse 1 to 10. Now we are in we are in the verse verse 6. Now, and when I'm coming again, we are come to read the verse 7. For many of us have been selfish. Acts chapter 11, 13, verse 1 to 10. 1 to 10, 1 to 10. Now, evangelists have been selfish. Ministers of God are selfish. They, are, they like themselves. They like themselves. They, 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 they want to benefit from their own good. The word of God has been hidden from some people. They are selective. Many of us are selective. If you are not part of them, you are bound. If you are not part of them, you are not part of their God blessing. If you are not part of them, you are this. If you are not part of them, you are like that. You have failed over here. And the Lord said, if you take what I'm saying, you, he will have mercy upon you. Bro, can you uh, open, uh, go to the verse 7. Open Ask, to the verse 7. Ask okay. chapter 13. Wait for a while. When I tell you to read, then you read. The mystery of us, said, he said, to those who are hungry for the word of God. Those who are hungry for the word of God. So who are hungry? Who are those who are hungry for the word of God? Who are hungry for the word of God? Those who don't know Christ are hungry for the word of God. Those who don't accept Christ as the Messiah are the way. They are the task corrected. Those who, those who prostitute, those who shall bra, those who don't fear God, those over there who have not heard the good news are those who are hungry for the word of God. That's why you mention it in the verse 6. Please, can you read the verse 7 for me, please? Acts chapter 30, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Okay, my Bible stops at uh, 28. Mm -hmm. It doesn't reach 30. Pardon? My Bible stops at 28. It doesn't reach 30. No, no. 13, 13. 1, 3, okay. 13. Okay, okay, okay. Mark, Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. Let me read. The verse 7 says, who was a prophet named by Jesus? Who was a prophet called by Jesus? So the prophet put it under the first prophet. We replace this by Jesus or the first prophet as a by Jesus. So uh, to right now, at this end time, all four first prophets knew the word that we have been preaching. The holiness that we have seen is for the, the those who are under by Jesus. That who are using the fake names of God, those who have gone to a place to to a place to take to to take different powers or to accept different powers to replace it with Jesus, they need the word of God. Now, how do you preach this word to them? We preach this word rather than preaching to them, we condemn them. Rather than bring it to them, you expose them in public so that they will be ashamed, they will be feeling lowly, they will, they will, they will lack of the love of Christ's love, they will feel that they are not part of the kingdom, they will feel discrimination because we don't love them. We see them that they are sinners, we see them that they are they are not worshiping the Lord, we see them that they are not of God. Yes, indeed, they are not of God, bro. The Bible verses. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. The book of Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. So now, me, holiness sister, or preacher, or yeah, a minister of God, feel first prophet as a first prophet. Yes, indeed, you are first prophet.
prophet, by the Lord has given their soul to you. Has so they are so to you to snatch them through the message that they have been given. When you are you don't preach to them, when you don't show them love, when you don't show compassion to them, when you don't see that they are they are they are they are the reason why Jesus came. No problem, no problem, but then I'm not telling you. When the Lord, they are the reason the Lord came. They are the reason the Lord came. If you don't know, if you don't believe that they are the reason why the Lord came, read the book of John chapter 3, verse 13, John 3, 16, John 3, 17, John 3, 18. Read it. He said, I came not, I am. Sorry, sorry. He said, for did God send not his son into the world to condemn the world? John chapter 3, verse 17, 16, 18, 19. The Lord did not come purposely for those who are good or purposely who are that, who are that. Read it, read it, and you see. He came purposely for those who are sick, who are in need of the word. I came not for the righteous by sinners to repentance. Luke 5, 32 also same the same word. But now, but now, we are discriminating who is good. We are discriminating. The word is for this. This that this, this are that. We have to take this and do correction of it, or else the Lord is angry with the ministers of God. The Lord is angry for the minister of God. He came not for those who are righteous. He came not for those who have accept holiness and righteousness. He came not for those who know Christ. He came purposely for those who don't know Christ, who don't believe the word of God, so that he preached to them. So that he will preach to them. So the verse 7 talks about those who need the word of God. It's those who don't believe Christ is the Messiah. Bro, can, we are in the 18, uh, the verse 8. Be there and I will let you to read. So the verse 8 says, he talks about those who will prevent people not to listen to the message. Those who prevent the, 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 the false prophet, the antichrist, those who, the Islamic, the Ankanka, the Harish Christians, they have people, they have people who pre will prevent the message not for those people to believe. That is the mystery over there. He talks about those who prevent people not to listen to the message. Bro, can you read from me? Acts chapter 13, verse 8. Let's go, please. Acts chapter 13, verse 8. Acts 13, verse 8. Mm hmm. It says, but the Iman, the, at 13, at 13, verse 8, verse 8 says, bro, you are not going fast. Let me read, let me read it fast. At 13, the verse number 8, at 13, the verse number 8 says, at 13, the verse number 8 says, But Lemans, the saucer, you see the mystery I reveal to you over there, he said, the Lord says, is those who will prevent the people not to listen to the message. We have the message the Lord has been given to you. They have people who prevent the broad shares, the false prophets, the antichrist, the Harish Christian, the Islamic, those who don't believe it, they have some people there who will, will prevent those people not to listen to the word of God. Let's read and confirm the mystery of God. He says, he says, but Elima, the saucer, for that is the that is what the meaning is. Oppose them and try to turn the uh, proconsul from the faith. So this one, the word I've been given to you, but he said element, which the mini sosa, 
he opposed the man or tried to turn the uh, procanta or the bad Jesus or the false prophet not to believe what Paul is come to preach, not to believe the message you are preaching. So the same thing, if you preach, some people will prevent people not to listen to the word of God. Can I come down for you to understand? If you preach the word, if you deliver a message, people will say, mm, Sagata is not of God. He's not doing this. He's not living a righteous life. Now he don't believe this. He don't believe that. So don't listen to them. So he don't do this. Don't listen to them. If you go and preach, they say, mm, he, died. he has no way to. They will convince you or they will return you not to accept the word of God. So we have opposers that they will oppose not to accept the word of God. So as evangelists and as a prophetess, what should you do? Or as a worker or a sender of Christ Jesus, what should you do? Or as a Christian of a, or a believer of Christ, what will you do? In it, when it comes to this place, we are angry. But the Lord, will, the, everything happened for a purpose. Everything happened for a purpose. If someone opposed your work or someone is preventing someone not to listen to the word, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. The one who is in you, the one who has authority in you, that has been sent. You have not been sent by your own, but you have been sent by Christ Jesus. So you have to listen to him for, 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 for him to teach you what to do to the person who is preventing those people not to listen to the word? Two sounds and miracles. Two sounds and miracles. And through that miracles, those who are, if you even not preach, they will accept the word of God. This message is very deep. It's very deep. It's very deep. Now, the verse 9, we are about to reach. We will continue tomorrow. The verse 9 is, the mystery the Lord said as you review as an evangelist or as a preacher. The verse 9 of um, Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. The verse 9 says, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit as caller to God's job. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you are preaching and you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you will do your own what your own way you will use your strength you will do it in fresh you that's why you will see that's why you will see when someone speak against you you become angry and you started to fight when someone's doing something and you don't like you turn it to argument when someone is doing something to you when you're preaching the word of god and they are not accepting you start blocking them from facebook you start not to talk to them you depart yourself from them you separate yourself you'll be far and they will be you you will hate them before why why they why are you hating them because they did not accept your message because they did not you are not full with the holy spirit you are empty you are empty you are empty. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit as a God, as an employee in the very yard of God. So that you will know this pretty, pretty thing. Because the world you are bringing, no, not all of them will accept it. Some, you see the mystery in the verse, verse 8. He said those, they, they are the people, they have people who will prevent people not to listen to your message. So it, it comes like this. What will you do as a preacher? What will you do as a preacher? Let's read the Bible to confirm. Let's read the Bible to confirm. The verse, the verse, the verse 9 says, the verse 9 says, thank you, Holy Spirit. The verse 9 says, the verse 9 says, um, then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. So now we place yourself there. As you are preaching, you have to be filled with it. So it's very dangerous as an evangelist, not hearing the voice of God for almost one month. Two months, three months, you are not hearing the word of God. Only what you know is reading the Bible. You don't hear the voice of God. So, and within that man, you still preach. So who, where from the message you are preaching? Where from it? So you have to come down. Humble yourself and go before the Lord. If you have wrong, mistakenly wronged the Lord and you don't know, you preach mercy so that He can give you the spirit that was full, that was that full Paul, 
so that it will be slowly so that you will, you will be strength and know how to do the evangelism work many of us have been because we don't know this thing because the lord has healed our knowledge and our understanding from this mystery we are we the holy spirit have left us now we preach out of enviness we preach out of jealousy we preach out of bitterness we preach out of heaviness. You see, you can see some, some, if somebody is preaching, the person is angry. Yes, he's not, the Holy, he's not filled with the Holy Spirit. He's using his flesh. That's what the Bible says. If you sow it in the flesh, you will reap in the rot way. Why don't you sow it in the spiritual way? Because at this end time, we are in the time that we are worshiping in the spirit. That's what the Bible says in the book of John. He says, now the true worshippers are, uh, the, 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 we have a, uh, uh, John chapter 15, verse, yeah, John chapter 15, right there. John chapter 5, let me see. He said, a time is coming. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. A time is coming. Where the true worshippers will worship the Lord in true and in spirit. This is the time. It's, don't wait for any time again. A time has come that the true worshippers will worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. So if you're doing the word of God at this end time and you don't have the Holy Spirit, then which spirit is using you? Which spirit? is using you if you don't hear the voice of god which message are you preaching what from the message many of us have been using familiar spirit to preach many of us are using familiar spirit to operate our ministry many of us are using our own strength and we have to humble ourselves for the lord to teach us so that he can fill us with the holy spirit again if you can't hear the voice of God for almost two weeks, three weeks, one month, and still preaching, oh, and still preaching, where is from, where is from, please, someone is about to call, so let me write it. Okay. Okay. Some of us have been left. Some has some. Sorry, someone is. Sorry. Some of us, some of preachers, some of em, I, I mean preachers, have been left with the Holy Spirit. That's yes, the Lord. The Holy Spirit has left them. Why is it that my AC is? It's, some of the, of the Holy Spirit has left us and you are preaching from our own flesh, our own mind, our own thoughts. It's very dangerous. The true worshipers will worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. So the verse 9 says, Paul, that saw, that uh, which his name is Saul. Uh, Paul now, he was so, and now he's poor, has been filled with the Holy Spirit. He is full with the Holy Spirit. So he's come to against, or the Lord is come to teach him what to do to the verse, the verse 9, the verse 8. Those who are preventing people not to listen to the message of God. The Lord is come, the, the Holy Spirit is come to teach Paul what to do. What to do. And adopt this. The Lord says you should adopt the strategy, the attitude, the character of the apostle, or else you are working in vain. You are working in vain. You are working in vain. And that day, the Lord will tell you, prophet, pastor, that you have been preaching for 12 years, 5 years, and depart from me. I knew you not. Depart, depart from me. I knew you not. May God forbid. That's why he loves his children. That's why he has given this message. If you accept it, I will have mercy upon them. Thank you, Jesus. 
So the verse 9, the verse 9 says, the verse 9 says, Then Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, look. Let me pause this. Before, let me review the, the verse 10. The verse 10. The verse 10 to you. So the, the verse 8 said, there, there are people who will prevent this bad Jesus, the false prophet, the antichrist, the Islam, the, those who don't believe in Christ, not to listen to what I'm preaching. So if I'm, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, this is the instruction from God. So if you are preaching, if you are a preacher, if you are a prophet, you have to get discernment spirit, discern on everything. When you are going to preach, if you ask the Holy Spirit and you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you will discern onto the person who is preaching, the person who you are preaching to. So if you go to any house, you discern and see who is accepted, who is from God or who is not accepted from God. So Peter, Peter uh, sorry, Paul, Paul, the verse 10, uh, the verse 10 says, having the discernment spirit do to descend on any spirit who attacked the message that has been given to you so at this end time the last generation that is about to end if you are preaching and you don't you are not filled with the holy spirit as i'm talking as you are going to preach as you carry your bible as you open your camera as you open your laptop you have to be filled with the holy spirit so that what the spirit gives to you is what you say because the bible says those who send by god speak god's word or speak yeah speak god's word so you have to get the statement for it. So let's see what Paul did to the person who is preventing the Antichrist, that is called the bad Jesus, which I described it, the Antichrist, the Enkankan, the Harris Christian, those who don't believe in Christ. What did Paul do to that person who is preventing his message to the Antichrist? Let's see. The verse, the verse 9, he said, Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, Look straightly. Look straightly. This is the segment spirit is using Paul here. The sending spirit is using Paul here. He said, Paul looks straightly. Paul looks straightly to the element and said, You are a child of evil. Hallelujah. I may the Lord give us the spirit of discernment. May the Lord give us the spirit of discernment. May the Lord give us the spirit of discernment. We pray for heaven to have mercy upon us so that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that you will know what we are doing, so that you will know the guidelines and the rules in the evangelism way, so that you will not replace it with any materialism. We will not replace it with envy and jealousy, selfishness, abusing. We will not replace Replace it with fighting, confusion, and disturbing, but you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord give us such spirit. Lord, you say in your words that if even us as sinners, we, we, we know what is good for our children. When our children ask us bread, we don't give them stone. When our children ask us uh, meat, fish, we don't give them snakes. How much more when you ask you the Holy Spirit to do your work, you will not give us. We stand in your words right now that let us be filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray to any evangelist over there, a preacher over there, prophetess over there, any follower, any Christian that may the Lord give them the Holy Spirit to stay in this end time in the mighty name of Jesus. I this time around, we don't need money. At this time around, we don't need money. At this time around, we don't need partner. We need the Holy Spirit. Where is my bush? We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. See what happened here. If as a preacher, you don't have this. As a preacher, as a Christian, by this time, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You can't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. It means you have replaced the, the house of the Holy Spirit to something else. Some of us have replaced the Holy Spirit with enviness. Some of us has replaced the Holy Spirit with enviness. So the Bible says, some of you pray, uh, preach out of enviness. He says, 
some of us reach out of enviness. You envy your friend and you are preaching. You are jealous of your fellow preacher and you are preaching. You, 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 are, you have been full because you have forsaken the rules and regulation, the rules, of a, the rules and the regulation of the guidelines that will be guide you as evangelists. And we have been praying. And see, and see, and see, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Revelation says, do not add my wealth. Do not add anything to the world. Do not add anything to the world. Let the person, anyone who will add something to the world, to my wealth, will, when you add, they will add, they, they, they will add it in heaven. When you take it out, they will take your name out. And he said, let the person who adds something to my wealth be under curse. Be under curse. Be under curse. And this is why you ask me, and time where how will I see that I have added something to the word of God? Yes, you have replaced the Holy Spirit. Any sin, take this for me. Any sin, any sin is a spirit. Any sin is a spirit. 